Coming up on Fantasy Food Camps, it's an outdoor food adventure to remember. We follow four lifelong friends as they trade in their hectic city lives to rough it in the picturesque backcountry at Montana Cooking Camp. There, they'll spend five days learning the tricks of the trade for making mouth-watering meals, all without electricity or other typical kitchen conveniences. We arrived at 2.30 this afternoon in Missoula, Montana, and then drove up here to Phillipsburg. And it's just fascinating country. I've never seen anything quite like it. The weather's been extraordinary. It's blue skies, lots of wildlife, and it's just been gorgeous so far. The reason people travel here is to learn firsthand what it takes to create great meals outdoors. We all love getting together and cooking. Uh, we love eating what we prepare, and socially, food is very important to us. I'd like to welcome you guys to Montana and also to the Royal Time uh, Camp Cooking Program. Uh, our goal here is to have uh, uh, some fun and also learn how to cook some meals over uh, minimal means. So we're going to be doing some Dutch oven stuff and maybe cooking some fish. And there's a lot of people that wish they'd have done something like this and just never get the time to or never take the time to. And so i got to tip my hat to you guys. Cody, I would describe him as the strong, silent type. He's uh, reserved in his uh, mannerisms and all, but he's definitely sharp. You can tell that his wheels are turning. and. He put you at ease. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to have you guys. Great bunch of guys, you know, uh, city slickers, but nonetheless gung-ho and excited to come out here and, and uh, give it a chance. It's day two, and we drove out and met Cody and LeRae at the gate and met Bill. Bill, to me, is a good old boy. He's an easygoing, good-natured gentleman. LeRae is a little fireball. If she was an animal, she would be a hummingbird. She runs a very tight ship. You can tell she's been doing this for a long time. You can tell she cares about this. Um, and you can tell that she cares about us learning about it. A uniformity in any kind of cooking and baking is very important. We are chopping potatoes and trying to keep our fingers on. <laughs> Good? You betcha. All right. Good to go? Don't over stir. <laughs> and so throw the lid on it, make sure it's on tight, and that's Shake good. Shake it, not stir. Yeah. It's basically the cream sauce that these potatoes are going to cook in. She explained each step that we were going to do and then followed us through it and, and guided us. It's evening of day two, and we're just sitting down to dinner and getting to enjoy the fruits of our labor that we've been working on since about lunch and having some great Thank you, Dutch you oven potatoes. Oh, these Coffee potatoes sauce. are amazing. And enjoying this dry rub that we put on some uh, chicken to make it a little more flavorful, a little bit more Montana. Get a little spice in there. What do you think, guys? I think we made a good meal. Yeah, yeah. this is great. <laughs> Off to a good start. One of the favorite desserts you're ever going to find in camp is cobblers. And you can make apple cobbler, peach cobbler. You can use any kind of fruit. Today, we're making a three berry cobbler. This time, in any cake mix, it's going to say put your electric mixer on it and mix it for three minutes. So you keep mixing it, and I'll do the humming sound. Mm, there's our electric mixer out here. Mm. Yeah. We made some kebabs out of elk that I cubed up and we marinated. So I've got balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar, brown sugar, cider vinegar, salt, pepper, and olive oil. The reason I add the olive oil is because the oil helps the marinade stick to the meat. We've got these vegetables, all different colors, and then we've got some pineapple. What's that cobbler we made? Cobbler's right here. All right. Here we go. Take the lid off of this. There you oh, go. Excellent. <laughs> Yummy. Mmm. <laughs> Amazing. I can't believe we just had dinner and it's already 9 o'clock. It's still light outside. It's, it's gorgeous in Montana and we've had just a, a day full of instruction, hanging out. And now the day's over. We're exhausted, ready to get some sleep and get ready for fishing tomorrow. We stayed in the tents all night. It brings back memories really of being a kid for me because as an adult I've not gotten to go camping that much. It actually came out of me of summer camp because there were four of us in the tent. As everybody's trying to go to sleep, everybody's kind of joking and cutting up, and that was just, that was fun. I can't imagine ever having that opportunity in my day-to-day -day life. All right, you guys. We are going to cook up the trout that you 
caught this morning. If you would cut some slices of onion, take some lemon pepper, sprinkle it on the outside, take the seasoning salt. I'm gonna take a little bit of that spinach, sprinkle it on him, and I'm gonna wrap this up. Ooh. Oh yeah, I feel it. The best parts of us hanging out was when we got to sit around the campfire underneath these huge stars. And I think I know why they call it Big Sky Country now. The Big Dipper had never seemed so large. It was right at the horizon, and we just kind of sat around the campfire, kept stoking the fire, keeping the embers coming up, and talked about what we'd done these past couple days, how hard it's This is something that I took for granted as a kid, and the more I travel, the more I just come right back here and feel at home, and it's, it's neat to be able to share Montana. Mm -hmm. Here, we've been able to work together. You're not even realizing that it's a team building experience. You get to know people better. Seeing a new experience. I've never used a Dutch oven particularly. I have great memories of the camp, spending time with Larray and Cody and Bill. That's been a lot of fun, camping out, the beautiful scenery, and of course the food. I mean, the food has been spectacular. When I leave this camp, I'll be taking certainly new friendships that were created while I was here and people that I would think that I would keep in touch with for years to come. It's going to be kind of sad to go back home and uh, know that this exists out here and jump back in our busy lives and uh, know that they're going to be out here cooking away and uh, wrangling the horses. I get a sense of satisfaction and happiness because we make a difference in a lot of people's lives. I think a lot of people want to come here, they dream about it or think about it, and I think these guys did pretty good. When they leave here, they're going to be taking a sense of accomplishment because they came out here and they actually did this cooking for themselves. They're going to take that with them, plus they're going to take a knowledge about life in the backcountry here. I'm going to definitely think back to the experience that I've had while I've been here. It's not just the cooking. I mean, I'm going to take those skills home with me, but uh, this is a lifetime experience.